Okay, let's talk a bit about partial updates, which are very important. And you know, if you think about SQL, you know, update orders, just to give an example, set avail zero where ID, right? So this is a partial update of, of the row in the orders table where ID equals one, two, three. I'm gonna just assume for this example, there's only one of the or one order with that ID. Maybe that's the primary key. And we're gonna set this one field to this. So the concept of a partial update is, is, is hardly a new notion. And I think from this kind of just a good reminder that pretty important, right? Because you can imagine, and, and, and in fact, in Mongo, it's probably more important because Mongo documents can get very rich. So if you think of this as a single document in Mongo, and this could be a small one, right? You got a lot of fields and, and a lot of values and embedded objects and arrays and so forth. So as these get quite large, we certainly don't want to send the whole document back if we just wanted to change like one little thing here or something, right? So we want a way to do that, and we have a way to do that. So that's important. As a side note in Mongo, there is a limit on the size of these BSON documents, um, and that limit is 16 megabytes per document. And this limit is a bit arbitrary. It's, it's sort of done as a sanity check, just to make sure that we're not, as a developer, accidentally adding giant documents and not intending to do that. The server could handle documents that are larger as long as they're smaller than RAM. But if you imagine we had a document that was, say, for example, you know, 100 megabytes, and you just asked for that document, you did a find one on it, well, 100 megabytes is going to go across the network. You're going to saturate a gigabit Ethernet connection for a full second. And if you intended to do that, great, that's fine. But if you didn't, you know, that might not be good. So that was the rationale here. So at this limit, will go up, I think, over time, kind of with Moore's Law. You know, we're kind of think of it as a percentage of the amount of RAM on the server or the client machine uh, is why there is this kind of limit and uh, as a sanity check there. So we're going to do partial updates here. And the way we do this is we have special operators which allow us to do modifications here. So things like set, to set a new value or a value period if the field didn't already exist somewhere. We also have push to allow us to add something to an array. Add to set will add to an array if not already present. Pop, remove from array. Also unset to delete a field or whether here or the whole thing you could do either one for example. Um, so, so there are several of those and if you look in the Mongo documentation there's a page on this and it, it lists these things off so um, that's where you would find more information. So let's go do a couple. So once again we have this variable pointing to this test collection so let's do a couple things. So first of all let's do an update where ID is 101. Let's set and we see here that Y100 was added uh, to that. As noted before, I've chosen not to put quotes around this and this and this, although you can, and the JSON RFC would definitely have quotes around those. You can imagine, actually, just to give you a little example here, if we treated this as a, a document in the shell in just the JSON context, we'll see here that it, it put the quotes in when it prints it out. But in JavaScript, it's legal if certain characters are at the beginning, a dollar sign or an S or an alphabetic character, for example, to leave out the quotes. I'm just doing that because I'm being lazy in terms of typing. Let's do another one. What this does is says for the document matching this, increment Y by one. And we see that happened. Dollar sign push can be used to push an item into an array. So here for the document 101, I want to add this string as an element in this field, ARR. Let's just do that. And note that th the field did not pre-exist. If it did and it was an array, it'd be okay. So it created it, right? So in generally in Mongo, if you do things that are sort of additive, like a dollar sign ink or dollar sign push, 
if the field was just not there, it will create it because it, it can figure out implicitly what needs to happen. You're saying I want to add this to an array. Field didn't exist, it'll add it. So this comes back to that sort of schemaless notion in Mongo, right? So if you wrote some new code, you did a new release of your app, and it has this, and there are old documents that don't have this field yet, that's okay. We don't have to run some DBA script ahead of time that adds a uh, empty array to every single document. And so in Mongo, that's a pretty normal pattern, what we just did there. And let's actually do, I'm just going to do this a few more times and see what happens. And we see here we're getting uh, just multiple appends to that array. We could instead do something like add to set, which will add if not already present. So I'll do that. So multiple times, fine. And we'll see here that it was only added once because add to set is inserts if not present. Okay, let's do a quiz. Suppose we have a collection cards in our database with one document that exists. So there's only one document in the collection so far. Which of the following statements would set a field called available to the value one? Um, so you see the three statements there. 